you're going to want to prepare yourself some potatoes. Um, so you want to chop nice little slices about 10 mil all the way down and then one big chop through the middle. So you end up these nice little dice slices that we can get into our pasty. Best tool for the job, nice chop saw, don't mess about, just get the job done. All right, here we go. Here we go. I'm not brave enough to go any further in with my fingers on that one, but it's now time to cross, cross cut the thing the other way. That will do the job. Lovely. Right. On to the next stage. We only need one spud for this recipe. So at this point, we're going to need a cheese. Right, now you're gonna need some sort of sturdy fixture for this. Uh, that ought to do the job. It's my nice compound vice. Uh, quite a versatile piece of equipment. So make sure that's nice and tight in there, nice and sturdy. Because we're gonna be using the best tool for this job, which is your, uh, your electric plane. Um, missed uh, a workpiece with one of these before and hit my hand and I don't care to repeat it. So make sure you uh, Think about your safety first. Okay, so let's just split the packaging off the top here. And I'll just run the Stanley knife all the way around the outside. Now, this is a relatively mild cheddar we've got here. I uh, would normally use a mature cheddar for this kind of recipe. However, I found that the mechanical properties of the mild cheddar are a lot more suited to planing. So. This is the one we're going to use. Just gonna make a nice cut across the top of the cheddar. Idea is obviously we're trying to flake it up so we get that, that nice sort of distribution of cheesiness inside our pasty. Okay, here we go. Superb, there we have it, a nice bag full of cheese. And that's, uh, and probably see if I turn that inside out if I can. And you've got quite a nice little, nice little collection in there. I can just show the camera. That bag is nicely full of finely grated cheese. Okay, brilliant. So, we've got a few more things to do. Let's move on to the carrots next. The carrots add a really nice flavour and texture to the thing and they complement the cheese really, really nicely, uh, which is why it's traditionally a staple of the pasty. So we're going to, uh, we're going to pop some, um, <laughs> I haven't got any bloody carrots. Oh, blimey. Hang on. There we go. 43 minutes, that's got to be a record. Good old Tesco's. Oh, brilliant. Thanks very much. I'd like to smash carrot. £2.49 for that service. I'm done without that. And that's what you get. Modern technology, brilliant. So of course, to prepare the carrots, I'm gonna to need to uh, take off this exterior coating here using a lathe. Um, now I do have a slightly larger machine there with a, a four inch chuck on it. Um, this is a better precision lathe than what I'm gonna to use today. That one would be better for things like aubergines, you know, slightly fatter plumper veg with a different aspect ratio. This is really good for fine work. So what we're gonna do, uh, if you've got a four jaw chuck even better, but this will do. Clearly that's not gonna work by itself. So we're gonna have to lend it some radial support on the tailstock. Um, let's take that out for now. Okay. 
pop an 8mm HSS drill on the uh, in the tail. We just want to make a hole in the end of the carrot there. Just want to uh, give us somewhere to key in and help us to uh, support one end of it. Just make sure that's nicely lined up. Now I can actually sort of turn this drill in by hand. There we go. Because before it's properly supported, I don't want to start the lathe. I'm going to ruin my nice carrot. Right, so now you've made a hole in there, it's going to be around about uh, 20 mil deep into the vegetable. Release the drill from the chuck. And what we're going to do, take that out and actually we need to turn it round inside the vegetable. Reason being, of course, if we keep the cutting end of the drill inside the vegetable when it's rotating, it's going to tear a nice carrot to pieces. So we're going to pop this back into the chuck there, just like that. So have a nice smooth shank sticking out. Pop this back in. There we go. Beautiful. Look at that. Absolutely perfect. So that's going to rotate nicely on there uh, when I clamp it into the chuck at the other end. Now you don't need to go nuts with the speed on this. I'd suggest, you know, don't, don't go over 200 RPM for turning your carrots. When you've got that on there nice and secure, of course, we're going to go in there with a nice sharp chisel. Make sure you've got a decent sharp edge on there, otherwise, of course, you're just going to shred your vegetable up and then just going to work your way all the way along the carrot with that nice smooth finish on the outside, having removed the outer coating. Right, there we go. And there we go. Look at that. That's uh, nicely peeled down there. Fantastic. Obviously, next job is to release that from the lathe. We are done. Let's back the tailstock off there, and that is ready to come off. Smashing. Okay, no. Next thing to do: chop this up beautifully. Now I'm just going to reiterate this again. Uh, I didn't put much force onto the end of the carrot. You really don't need very much. Otherwise you'll compromise the structural integrity of the end of the carrot and you'll have a crack propagating right down the axis of it. So obviously best tool for the job, same as the spuds. We're just going to use that on the chop saw very quickly. Okay. I'll just pop this stuff out of the way nicely there. Just uh, give myself a little bit of working room. Maybe <sighs> grab the... Uh, Fedge proof goggles. Once again, safety first. It's critical in a workshop. There we go. Right. There we go, that was nice and quick. Um, you notice I haven't done the end bit. There's a good reason for that. One, I value my fingers. Two, no one likes that bit anyway. So, I'm gonna just get the calipers on there. Cars, there we go. Yeah, I wanted that about four, three. That's what we got, that's, that's pretty good. We'll come back to why we do that later. So, next step, we need to prepare some onion. Right, so we tidied up a little bit here because uh, when you're cooking, remember, cleanliness is absolutely key. Um, so we've got our onion. Uh, first thing you'll want to do, get yourself a, a hacksaw or something like that. Just cut those little annoying bits off the edge there. That one will go. That one will go. Just pop straight through that. Now, next thing, standing knife. Just score it around the outside. Just like that. It doesn't matter really how deep you go. Remember that 8 mil drill bit we talked about earlier? Just going to make a little hole in the side of the onion. Uh, just about there. Here we go. On the opposite side to where you made the slit. All right, now we got that. The next thing you're going to need is your airline. Now, 
I don't really have any advice on pressure here, but you need to be somewhere above five, six bar. I'm running this at eight. Um, if you can get it to 10, wonderful, good for you. So air supply into the side of the onion, that just starts to loosen things off. You can see, if you look carefully, the onion will pulsate slightly as the air goes in, just loosen all the layers off there nicely. Now, I'll we'll just pop this airline next to that slit. There we go, layers start falling away. There we are. That just comes straight off there, really nicely, just blow it away. Simple job. Best way to chop this up is going to be with an angle grinder. Now this angle grinder doesn't have one of those uh, dirty great big uh, grinding blades in it. This is a nice thin disc cutter here. Um, so, you know, a fixed string, uh, grip it nicely there. You don't want to get too close to the blade with your fingers. Um, reason we're using this, of course, is if you try and get in there with an onion, it's got such a big radius onto the chop saw, you'll either lose your fingers or quite a lot of this lovely onion. Don't want to do either of those things. There we go. We're just uh, going to clamp it like that. And to avoid ruining my lovely workbench, uh, pop that in there like that. Okay. And there is a nicely chopped onion. There are two reasons for wearing the eye protection. <sighs> that really got to me. Excellent. So, all right, that'll nicely chopped up uh, the way you want it. The next thing to do is find a biscuit tin. Every garage has one. It's the one that's got a few old drill bits and screwdrivers and old bolts in. This is my one. So what I'm gonna do, just pop the onion in there. Like that, and we'll come back to the biscuit tin in a short time when we get to cook the onions in it. There you go, that's all done. Lovely. Seal the lid and put that to one side for later. So, we've done the veg now. The next thing to prepare is the chicken. Chicken breast is gonna be the best option. Uh, I'm not particularly fond of picking it off the bone, so I've got a pack of three breasts here. I'm just going to uh, pull one out there like that. Uh, best tool for the job, back to your trusty hacksaw. Um, you tend to find, because of the nature of the material, it skids all over the place when you use power tools on it. So it's just easier to cut it up into these nice chunks. That's about the kind of size you want. Maybe, actually, I'm going to half that. There we go, that's about what I want. Let's go down for that bit there. Let's pop that through. Yeah, I'll that too. The reason for chopping it to an exact size is gonna become apparent shortly. Beautiful. Now, our meat's gonna cook relatively quickly. So the next thing to do is to start cooking the veg. So in order to cook your veg, you're going to need your trusty uh, steamer, wallpaper steamer. There we go. I'm gonna pop that on the table, take off the cap. This one's already quite warm. Now, if you've actually chopped the veg already to the right tolerance, it shouldn't be a problem to do this. So you should just be able to pop the um, carrots in there. I'll pop those in first. Uh, I'll pop the potatoes in there as well. This one just quite tough. So brute force ignorance. When in doubt, hit it with a hammer. It looks like I don't need to. Right there we go. That's all in there. It's all in there. We'll just pop that lid on there. Make sure it's nice and secure. 
So we just need to pump the power back on and then those vegetables are gonna be boiling away nicely. We can just leave them for a while while we get on with everything else. So then back to the chicken. Uh, we're gonna reach for our trusted friend, the variable temperature soldering iron. There we go. Um, I'm not gonna use the normal stand for this for obvious reasons. Or reasons that will become obvious. There we go, nice bench vise there. And just clamp that on. Now we're gonna pop the soldering iron through the middle of the vise and just clamp it in right in the center. Obviously don't turn your soldering iron on yet. So we're gonna get the nice diced chicken and skewer it over the soldering iron, just like that. There we go, it's going on there like an absolute dream. There we go, it doesn't matter if you don't get it all on because you can do a couple of a couple of runs on this. I should think that's probably enough for now. So effectively what we're making here is a chicken kebab, except we're not cooking it from the outside, we're cooking it from the inside. Um, I'm gonna pop the soldering iron on. Because we're using point heat on the food, we don't want too much of a high temperature. We'll just burn it if we do that. So to start with, I'm gonna settle for 130 degrees, really quite cool. You can only go up from there. If you start too hot, you'll ruin it. So, ah, it seems my minimum is 150, so that's what we're stuck to. Okay, lovely job. Chicken's now there. We'll leave that cooking for a while. Now we can move on to the bacon. So now we're moving on to bacon. I've got some lovely thick cut bacon here, which is my personal favorite. Just uh, pop some out of there. Bung it on the work surface. Lovely job. Bung that out of the way and then grab our cooking device, which is in this case, uh, arc welding plant. So what we're going to do, it's just cook up one end of the bacon there. Just make sure that wire doesn't go anywhere. Make sure it doesn't get burnt by the chicken skewer. Just fold that over a little bit there and clamp it in. I'm gonna show you actually with the aid of a conductive screwdriver here, how you can cook bacon. And I'll just pop the power on. It's a very noisy welding plant I have here. So here we go, look at this. So obviously I'm gonna hook up both ends of the bacon, but I just wanted to show you very quickly what you can do with a little bit of electricity. There we go. Already, already smells very bacony. Look at that, fantastic. So clearly I'm not gonna stand here and do this. We'll hook clips up to both ends of the bacon and then give it about five minutes to cook. There we go. So we're just going to leave this for five minutes or so. This will slowly cook itself. I've got the current down nice and low so it's not going to get obliterated um, in nanoseconds. And while that's cooking nicely on there, we can go away and prepare the, the pastry for the pasty outside shell. So we've got the veg and the meat on the way. Next thing to do, obviously, is the pastry. We've got to sort that out. That's the last ingredient for our pasty. So you're going to need some sort of mixing tin. Uh, I. I would have thought something like a paint kettle, something like that would do. You know, got anything better? Uh, oh, looks like it's been used something a bit nasty in the past. Just, once again, obviously we're working with food, so you want to keep everything as hygienic as you can, make sure it's clean. So I've got my paint kettle here. Um, constituents of pasty pastry, very simple. Um, flour, water, and I like to add some herbs as well. Just gives it an extra bit of a bit of taste, bit of flavour. So the amount I'm going to put in here is fairly arbitrary. Uh, we just will be about. Let's see that. There we go. I mean that that should be enough. We're only making one. Lovely job. Uh, and then you add water to match. Now the milling bit I'm going to use to do the uh, mixing here. That's an end mill on there. It's a relatively small one. You might want to use a bigger one. I'm quite privileged with this wonderful machine because this has got a reciprocating quill on it. So I don't actually need a big bit. Um, this should do the job quite nicely anyway. So I'm going to pop some water in there. I'll just show you this. 
I'm going to start off with about that sort of thing and then be fairly liberal with my herb additives. Let's pop some of that in there. There you go. That was basil, oregano. I like these two, but it's whatever you prefer. It's just quite a nice addition to the mix. Lovely job. There we go. So everything in there, uh, all the herbs, the flour, water, that is not going to go. I'm just going to shift this across a little bit, get that out of the way and make sure there's enough room for everything to reciprocate. How are we doing there? Let's just move that down a little bit. Maybe move this up a little bit. And should be ready for blast off. I'll wind it right in. We can just leave that meat mixing for the next sort of 10 or 15 minutes or so until we've got a nice doughy consistency to it. Here we go. Lovely pastry on. Now let's step back to those onions that we put in the biscuits in earlier on. So here they are. Just have the uh, veg bubbling away there in the background. I might just uh, turn that down a little bit for, for a second. So onions in there. We're going to take some butter, just scrape off a little bit of that. Uh, let's chisel off a nice big gob of it. There you go. Maybe a bit more. Uh, um, quite partial to butter. There we go, up in there. Now you want to grab your blowtorch. Um, I'm using map gas, which you know we all have our preferences. It's probably not the best. It's 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 quite a hot flame on this. Um, however, if you use it carefully and you keep far enough back, you can do a pretty good job with it. There we go. Just melt that butter down first. There we go. Just get myself a nice controlled flame. And just move the biscuits in around just to get that butter nice and spread out there. Look at that, beautiful. Idea is to distribute the butter as much as possible around the, all of the onion there. That's already smelling good. This is one good smelling garage today. Oh, the tin's getting tin's getting quite warm now. I might just switch to the uh, proper cooking tools here. Stirring. Oh. Uh, that's probably going to do us, I think. Probably going to do us. I should mention, of course, because uh, this is map gas. I suggest you use butane. I couldn't find any, unfortunately. Uh, if you're going to use map gas, beware it can melt aluminium. So, any tools that you're using, or even a, an aluminium biscuit tin, um, you might melt if you're not careful. That's beautiful. Now, now we've done the onions, uh, the onions can be joined by everything else. So the next thing we need to do is sieve out all of those vegetables, get everything in the same place, and then as soon as the pastry is done, we're going to turn it into the pasty, and then we're going to cook. That actually looks, that actually looks pretty good. Look at that. Mixed really nicely. And that's pretty much what I wanted. Have a look at that. There we go. 
I think we switch off there. That's right. So I'll take the dough out and then it's time to turn it into a pasty. Fantastic. So now we're ready to put it all together. We have our dough. Uh, we've got the onions done now. All we need to do is bring the ingredients over to the chicken and bacon area. Uh, all of my ingredients that are going to go into the pasty are going to end up in here. And then I'm going to put them into the, into the dough mix. So I'm going to have to make some space, which I'll do quickly. Uh, bacon's looking very nice. That's kind of how I like it. Oh, it's slightly adhered to the wood. I think what I'm going to have to do there is get a, get a chisel quickly. Let's knock that off. There we go. Lovely. All right. Good, good start. Oh, I've put it in the wrong place. Look at that. I don't want to go there. I want to go there. And so does that. Fantastic. So that's off there. I'll get rid of this. Put that up there. Excellent. Let's secure ourselves a nice working space over here. Extra chicken we'll do something with in due course. So. Just turn that off. I think that's quite well enough done. Dough. So I'm going to grab all this dough in my hand and I'm also going to grab some flour as well. There you go. Just want to pop a nice bit of flour on the table there and pull out your dough. Now, I'm not using any power tools for this, but it's easy enough to do by yourself. So what you want to do is flatten this stuff down. It will stick to your fingers a little bit to start with. Don't let that worry you too much. Conventionally, people would use a rolling pin, I suppose. Fortunately, I've got some 316 here. There we go. I'm just going to roll it out nice and flat. Nice. Ultimately, what we want to do is get it as circular as we can. That's the idea. So you can roll it into this crescent shape, which then becomes your pasty. I'm not particularly good at getting exact circles with this, but I'll get it as close as I can. And then we'll just trim off the excess. So now we're ready to put the food into the pasty and fold it over. But of course, something's missing. Let's go back to our veg. Let's sieve that out and then we're ready to go. So that's nicely done now. It's pretty hot. I need to be careful. Oh, wow. Look at that. Fantastic. Right. I'll do the job. Grab yourself a funnel, anything with a nice narrow neck. You just want to catch all the bits and pieces as they go through. Um, any sort of gauze would do, but I find funnels pretty useful. Uh, you see, the wonderful thing here is that the water's cleaning out as it goes through, because I've used this for all changes a few times. Just have to give this a little bit of a shake. Come on. Come out, come out wherever you are. So that's it, we're ready to go. We've got all our ingredients in the pot here. I've removed the chicken from the soldering iron, that's in there. And if you remember the cheese bag from earlier, that's here. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna stir these up nicely and just pop that on top of the dough there, like that. Oh, that is fantastic, it smells brilliant. Okay, just remove the nozzle from this bag. It's um, actually not particularly helpful when you're trying to dispense, dispense cheese. Ah, there you go. That sort of conformed a little bit in there. Uh, there you go, look at that. Brilliant. Nicely grated. So I'm just going to spread that liberally all over it. Oh, that is fantastic. Right. Brilliant. Now all we're going to do is just fold the dough over. Just fold it over onto the ingredients and then press down with the fingers. Just to sort of scallop it together. Yeah. So 
And hopefully I can do this without breaking it. Just press that in, there we go. All those ingredients, just about. And just press it all together here. Finger and thumb all the way around till it's a nice crescent shape. That is starting to look. A little bit like a pasty. Smashing. Next thing to do, transfer the entire pasty back into the biscuit tin. Let's just make sure that comes away from the work surface there. You don't want to leave any of this beautiful pasty behind. There we go. So just grab that, pop it back in there. It's starting to hammer through a little bit. Then we are going to pop this on top of here. The next thing we're going to do is support this at one end. I say support, put something under one end. I should lure you leak it. And we're going to get some of this hand wash gel, alcohol gel. And just pop that into one corner. This stuff is brilliant because it's quite viscous, it's flammable, and it burns for absolutely ages. So I've got some source of ignition. There we go. Now considering how much alcohol is in that, it burns relatively slowly and really quite hot. So we're gonna put a nice load in there and we're gonna get the biscuits in. We don't wanna starve it with oxygen, but we just wanna lay it on top and keep the heat inside. Just gonna kind of pop the lid back on top, allowing a bit of a breathing gap around the edge. But you just want to keep as much heat in there as you possibly can without shutting off the air. That's brilliant. So we're gonna leave that. And we're gonna come back in 15 minutes. Okay, it's been a good few minutes now. Let's just have a quick look at What's going on in here? Wowzers. Okay. You can see there's a, a certain amount of fat that's caught fire in there. The great thing about this, of course, is if it does catch fire, then you can just pop the lid back on, shut off the oxygen, and whoops your uncle. Wow. Just have a look at that, though. Look at that. That's really cooked nicely. That's brilliant. Might, might be a little bit too uh, hot for me to touch at the minute. Let's just have a, ooh, yeah, <laughs> right. That does look beautiful. I'll get myself a tool to take that out then. And I believe it's dinner time. Absolutely sublime. And that is how you make a pasty in the workshop. I've been looking forward to this for some time, so let's give it a try. There you go. I'll show you inside this. Ah, look at that. Absolutely fantastic. 